Hey everybody, today is the KCP community meeting for September 13th. We have, a, as always, an issue in GitHub to use for our agenda. If you would like to add something to the agenda, um, please feel free to add it. Um, unfortunately, I apparently just denied Varsha access because I hit enter when I was trying to send this message. So if somebody could tell Varsha, please try to get back in for letter in. Um, so uh, the first item on the agenda comes from Stefan. So over to you, Stefan. All right. So um, user docs, I think there were a couple of discussions recently um, started in, in the thread about doc days, whether we want to continue that. My understanding is user docs is much more, and we should talk about that independently from doc days. So I think we all agree we need them. We don't have much. We have the only thing we have basically are Go docs on the APIs, which are kind of user docs. But of course, that's not enough. Um, and the question is yeah, how to start? In which model, like, will this be maybe an epic in next release, um, at least for the bigger topics? And the um, question is who will drive that, whether anybody is interested, um, and which kind of publishing will be used. There's a different topic Paul has brought up, we'll talk in a minute about. So we, we got the KCPIO domain, so we could do a docs KCPIO driven by markdown files, similar to other projects, um, maybe a Hugo Doxy site or something like that, and start with publishing API docs. There are a couple of generators out there, so it would be a very pretty easy one day, two day task to get that going. That might be a good step to start with. But of course, there are plenty of topics, and I think we need a collection of those where somebody has to start writing real docs like tutorials or any kind of bigger documentation, which is not a reference as API docs. So the question is about opinions, how to start. So my suggestion would be to start maybe with an epic and have people contributing in the next release. But of course, I'm happy to hear other opinions. So I would be happy to drive this. Um, I think we can start with soliciting topics that would make sense to be in our documentation. So uh, an outline, essentially. And um, you are probably sick of hearing me talk about Cluster API, but <laughs> here's the Cluster API documentation. This is published on Netlify using the Make Docs tool. I don't care how we publish it. I don't care how we generate it. Um, what's more important is the content. So um, what I like about the work that we did here is that there's a relatively brief overview. And then the outline that shows up next is how do you get started? And um, there's a quick start. And I tried to model what I put in our README in the PR that I did. Uh, we need to fix the formatting, but there's an overview. And then there's a quick start. And then anything beyond the quick start is here's all the next things you could look at. So um, the other thing I'll point out about the, the cert manager docs is uh, when you get beyond quick start concepts and personas, there's what sort of tasks can I do? And I think that's a good approach. So like setting up a sinker, that's a task, creating workspaces and managing them, those are tasks. So we can work as a community to try and put together an outline and then have folks assigned to working on the individual pieces. Uh, Sergius, you're next. Um, just raising general interest to contribute. Um, I'm, I'm fine with whatever um, who's taking the lead. Um, I, I generally feel when I was wandering through the documentation of this project Parker uh, about continuous profiling that you know whenever I land on KCP I would love to understand the sort of all the general architecture the use cases 
the project is supposed to help me and then what what you just said and the like for for the given use cases have like a little tutorial on how to set things up so yeah um consider my drive-in and feel free to assign me documentation tasks as well um, i think you know we have a good start with the markdowns in the docs folder um but like this should be continued and be on the landing page uh, yeah so very interested in that to contribute and feel free to reassign tasks to me thank you um steve you're next yeah i just wanted to <clears throat> call out that i think like we ch chat with people trying to use kcp all the time and we answer their questions and so finding some way to like once you've answered a question at least re file an record, issue yes. we document this <laughs> yeah with a link to the slack thread that would be i would rather see us have a good process for doing that rather than sitting down and trying to figure out from the top down everything we need to document yeah i think we can maybe do a blend of, of both like we can start with a minimal top down yeah. outline yeah. and then grow over time paul you're next I'll say I love that idea because that's how I was able to contribute some docs without being an expert in the field. Um, I'd also want to mention whether or not we want to have this as part of our definition of done for an epic. And the other thing that I want to do is, is put MJ on the spot because he was just telling me he started using KCP on a side project and I had some thoughts on docs. Oh, really? You're going to do this now? You bet. Yeah, so basically, for those who don't know, I'm basically used to work for Red Hat. I always attach on KCP, but I'm having nothing to do with that at this point. And I'm basically using this for the side project I used to work. I think I'm going to can everything and use KCP as a base platform for that, just because the main thing I was working is reverse dial and accessing clusters, which are disconnected. But without going into much details, like the main struggle I faced is basically understanding the concepts between a physical cluster, logical cluster, workspaces, sync targets, because I assume these are different names to avoid them overloading like clusters. So it's a sync targets and things like that, which I get the point, but it's kind of was challenging to get a relationship between like what's if I don't want to use, let's say, KCP as a as a unified control plane, but just simply as a cluster registry to be able to access multiple clusters through a single entry point, which could be one of the use cases, it's very hard to map one-to-one -one terms to basically what's there. But I don't know. I can drop some feedback somewhere offline if that would be helpful. Yeah, definitely. Um, we know that the terminology <laughs> is confusing. Sync target used to be called workload cluster for what it's worth, but we didn't want to make it sound like if you created a workload cluster resource, you would have a cluster that was usable. So that's why we renamed it. Um, but yeah, please, um, you can create discussions in GitHub if there's a place where you want to chat about things. Uh, I would encourage folks to create discussions. We haven't really highlighted it much, but if you go to the project, there is a um, discussions uh, tab up at the top, and that's a good place to chat about things before deciding that something is actionable, and then we can make it an issue. OK, we'll do. So what are okay. the next steps to move um, forward here? So I think publishing API reference stocks is actionable. So uh, that's something where we can file an issue and uh, have a brief discussion about what tech we want to use and then get it assigned to somebody. And then um, the more the, the broader topic is all the other stuff. <laughs> so uh, a minimal top-down left nav outline approach for what sort of content we want to have, and then starting to 
actually write that content. So uh, I guess step one is deciding where we're going to host it and how and with what, like how are we going to generate the content? And then um, we can do the other two things, the reference docs and the, um, the actual site generation. Yeah, they are independent. So we had a discussion already on Slack. I think we will just continue that about the tools we use. Um, concrete about process should we start an epic and put subtasks there and assign people? Or do we wait until next milestone? What should we do there? Um, let me think about that a little bit more. I mean, I, I think it, we can create an epic, but I wouldn't expect it to get finished for 0 0.9. No, 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 that's what's also go, but we should have it tracked. That's what I mean. Not yeah. just issues, but make it official. Steve? Are we thinking as well that like we're tracking the mechanistic setup and publish tasks? Like we're not having a docs epic that contains like documentation for some new TMC feature. I think it's both. There's a technical part, and but the outline feature. I think it's an effort we will do now. It's a one-time epic we will have. Eventually, there will be the discussion that, that Paul, I think, was mentioning that how is this part of definition of done? Is it something we have in an epic? And there was a discussion. Maybe it's also something we can talk about now. Um, so upstream has this this doc. Uh, Deadline. I'm not sure when it is exactly, but it's before the release, basically. But after code freeze, maybe something like that would work as well. If we tech releases with alpha and we are, yeah, serious enough about docs and we wait until official tagging of the zero version, the zero nine, for example, until we have docs, and everybody basically has to contribute. If they're not there. Nobody's. Yeah, I, I guess I think like um, if we're building a new feature, the assumption is we have like a user story driving it, which should map fairly cleanly onto one of these tasks that Andy was showing on the cluster API docs. And ideally, before that feature lands, and people start using it, we have that written down. That would be my straw man. Whether that's yeah, like exactly. definition of done or like how to like whatever, but it's basically the same thing. Maybe I would add you can have a feature under a feature gate, but before docs are there and we have to define what this means exactly. The feature gate is not removed. Yeah. So nobody is blocked to work on new stuff. But if you want to make it public to use us document. That works for me. So um, we should add that to the contributing doc. Uh, let me and I'd say if we have an epic, I think it probably makes sense if there's a bunch of mechanistic things need to happen to actually get this bootstrap. But then like, once it's going, it's not really like a sensible question to ask, like, how are docs going this, you know, because it's kind of intertwined with the work in general. So I just want to keep the, and maybe it's just like a, a mental thing for me, but like I, I would rather keep those like as tightly coupled to the actual implementation as possible. So it's not like a different bucket that you forget about. Okay. Um, I will, I pick an action item to get the contributing doc updated to talk about docs and feature dates and whatnot. Um, so I think we can asynchronously organize an epic and or tasks to get this started. Does that sound fair? And I, I'm happy to start that. OK, um, Paul, you have the next topic. Yeah, I think it just kind of dovetails into what we were mentioning before, we've got the KCPIO domain. We're going to make some decisions on how and what we want to dock there. So it, it probably relies on that technology yeah. discussion. So just general awareness. And if you have opinions on things that have worked well for you in the past, throw some comments on here. 
Cool. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Stefan, TBD milestone to project backlog. Yeah, this is maybe something we could just try out when we talk about the new issues. Um, so some people in the project try to work with projects in GitHub because they got much better and they are usable. So some of the features, um, like TMC features, say experimenting with that. Um, we realized, so what we have now that every new issue is going to the project, like the SAP project automatically. There's a GitHub action doing that. And we have a way now to, um, yeah, you're seeing it here, to see incoming issues in the project. And what is missing is that we don't use this TBD milestone, but we have to use something um, which is compatible to, to projects here to, to get just the issues which are not some subtask of an epic. And the proposal is if you go to some issue, maybe you click on one, there is a state of an issue on the right. If you click on where this, um, no, the state which is new. Yeah, but I think open, you have open to tab, move. right? Yes, open a new tab first to, to get directly on the issue. Because here you are. It's okay. To, to, to the right. right is yes, open a new, new, new tab. tab. Because here you're still in the project view. Project view. Basically, there is the status new, and there's also a status called backlog. And this should correspond maybe to a column in the yeah. board view. We, we can make that. Um... So there's, we don't misuse the milestones anymore, but use this. OK, yeah, I like that idea. Um, so we'll figure out the mechanics for the best way to do this. I don't think we need to take up everybody's time to yeah. <laughs> show me fumbling through GitHub projects. But yeah, I like that. But super quickly, though, if you go back to that issue that you had open, um, there's a plus one more on the right side. And so that's where we've. We have like particular focus groups, and and these epics are they were that's a custom field you added to yes, and so then yep. at the top of this you see the views like potentially that view or that view. If you click on those, then you can see progress inside of it, and you can also see obviously progress across the whole project. Yeah, which is precisely what is in TMC, for example, the next tab. Now it's uh, the the project is filtering issues if you click on the TMC tab, not through the 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 new epic custom field, but directly uh, based on the area, either you know core KCP or TMC, and then there is also the ability to very easily see everything that is linked to an epic or not, and you know everything that is in the backlog. Cool. Thank you all for putting this together. I like it. OK. Uh, any other topics anybody wants to chat about? I was going to ask if we had a takeaway from that for the next meeting. And uh, can we kind of demonstrate, here's how we would use those views um, to talk in this meeting or other meetings, or what our expectations would be for a contributor versus an approver or reviewer, or how it lines up to the roles and what they would use it for? I don't think it will change how users create issues. They are new from the beginning, so it's automatic. Mm. It's about this meeting, like when we go to the new issues in a moment. Um, it's just a different way to list them, and it allows other teams, like focus teams, to use projects. That's all I think. OK. Yeah, it would be cool if, if maybe in the next meeting we could hear from the one of the folks that are kind of prototyping with it, how it's been helping them. That'd be neat. Okay. Um, well, if you think of anything, uh, please feel free to hit the raise hand button and uh, I'll interrupt going through the incoming issues. Um, so I guess we don't really need to stick these in the TBD milestone anymore, um, but we can at least go through, wow, we have a lot. Um, go through the 28 here if we 
want or not? <laughs> what do you all want to do? There are not so many, actually. You have to um, hide epics and kind feature or something like that. So that's why did, I, I should think it was like me taking bullet points did, and then making them. Didn't strange. we want to to use directly incoming issues for this exercise exactly. today? Exactly. In the yeah. project, you have that. Precisely. That's why we propose it. Got it. And there's status as well as a column, so you maybe can even change here directly. Yes. So I still want to do prowl post init jobs that run against main and release branches because something may merge or the pull request test may pass and then it merges and I don't know, something's weird. So uh, unless there's objections, I'm going to put this in the backlog. Uh, improve the usage documentation for workload sync. Um, thought this one had comments on it. No, okay. Uh, I mean, this is more about user experience. So I think at the very least we need to uh, address each item here with a comment. Um, so I'll put this in the backlog. This one has had a bunch of back and forth. Um, I So one request that I have is that if there's a request for multiple things that we make each thing its own issue instead of having one issue that's got four different things in it. So um, let's, David, can I give this to you to basically close and replace with any work that we do want to proceed with? Um. Well, why not? I, I would be, you know, on PTO tomorrow. Oh, you're out. Evening, okay. So, so <laughs> okay, never mind. Quite packed um, until then. then but uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, there, part of them are more core related and part uh, of them are more TMC, I think, that, you know, true um, space so, is. I mean, I can take it since I've been involved in the back and forth or yeah. Steve, if you're Sorry interested. But obviously, even having you know the, them separated and being able to tag either transparent uh, either TMC or, or yeah, because the core is quite important if we want to. Okay, I'm going to leave it in new. Um, all right, this one. So, this was a request that when the sinker deployment and its related resources are deleted, the requester was asking that all of the synced content on the physical cluster get deleted. Um, we don't want to do that, but um, I would be OK with some sort of plugin command that can delete synced namespaces for a single syncer if, I mean, and you would have to do force or confirm. But that's that's as far as I'd be willing to go. Makes sense. Yeah. Draining actually would be nearly that, right? But you want that without the sinker running, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. This is like the sinker's gone for whatever reason, and I want to get rid of content that was synced for that sinker. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this is more of a feature request, but um, and could be help wanted. I think. Do you want TMC the TMC label on this? I guess so. Yes. Yes. Sure. Okay. Uh, User facing document about locations and placement backlog. Part of the epic, yeah. Which we have soon. Um, this was a proposal to donate a shell command that can install, start, 
stop, install the sinker, and clean up stuff. And I put a comment in here about, like, here's my development process, but maybe we start with some make file targets to start and stop the KCP server if wanted. But I, I don't know. I'm not particularly interested in trying to maintain a, a shell script that can do this. Everybody has a different workflow. Yeah. I think. So yeah, and 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 there were uh, a number of shell scripts, you know, initially for the demos that we did quite quickly for, you know, prototyping, and and finally we just removed them because it's hard to maintain, and so it seems it would be coming back in this direction that we previously had. Yeah, I mean, they, if we have a shell script that's in here, it's got to be part of CI that it doesn't break. So there's a there's a rule of thumb. Um, which I try to apply. A shell script, which uh, a shell, shell, shell script should be something where you can copy out the commands and execute them manually. In the moment, it's about hiding complexity. And I think this is about that. Yeah. It's over the line, basically. Um, and we tried we tried to be pretty um, strict about that around the test servers. Yeah. I mean, I don't script too much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, basically, I run test server. I hit Control C to stop it. I manually run RM if I want to delete stuff. I use make install to install things, and I use our commands to get a sinker installed. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. Do we want to just close this, or do you want to maybe do simple make targets for starting and stopping the test server? I could see the make file targets. If it's a five line or so, it's fine. If it's yeah, I mean, more, starting but... the test server is easy. Um, stopping it, you know, you have to keep track of a pitch. Actually, what we have, um, we start test servers, even the sharded one and so on. Um, I don't think we have a, a way to not start tests. Basically, this is missing. If we split it up in two steps, maybe we have what is asked for here. Yeah. OK. Um, all right, I'm going to put this in the backlog. Okay. Um, claiming permissions on a SAR or subject rules or cause fails. I know Sergius is looking in this, but he had to go. Oh, wait, no, this is different. This is. Um, can we just expose SAR and subject rules review to all virtual workspaces? What does it mean? It means that the controller that's going through a virtual workspace can issue a SAR and get a response. I think it's reasonable. What, what, what does it mean? Which, it which means that instead change? of having these be permission claim based, that when we're building out the API sets in the virtual workspaces, we would include these. But yeah, I, I get that, but why does one need that? I, I don't see it. So a controller that's running against Kubernetes today or OpenShift may want to do a SAR or a subject rules review. I don't see why you wouldn't say that a controller can do the same thing through a virtual workspace. Um, maybe. So you want to basically so you have an API, you own it. So it's about claiming, or is it? No, no. This well. So right now they're trying to claim it because this these I didn't APIs are not yeah. available. But it's about an owner of an API and to protect something, some API behavior uh, for users. There should be a SAR into the workspace checking something. Yeah. Yeah, this makes sense. I think. But not well, claiming so we would basically allow that. It would just be can't. enabled by default. Like, yeah, there's no claim required. It's just you go through the virtual workspace and that API is available. And you can basically do every SAR or do we restrict it? Because I think you shouldn't do it against other resources, just your own. I'm, I mean, for your own resources, um, a SAR, yes, allow that. I mean, but I don't want that a user, an, an owner of an API, can do a SAR against secrets. I don't see that. If you claim see, if you claim secrets, then you can do a SAR as well. I could see that as well. Okay. 
So it must be secure. No escalation. Now, I don't know. I actually don't know what a subject rules review is, but um, against resources, the API export owns or okay. claims. Yes, I think so. Well, we must be look into details what it means, whether it's feasible and so on, but owns for sure it's, it's doable. So this is in the backlog. Um, panic on S self SRR requests. Sounds like this is going against, this is just going against a regular clusters URL. So we probably just need to figure out what's going on here. And Sergius is working on it, so or has assigned it, so backlog. Uh, PR title indicators I'm working on. Don't we want to 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 put it? Don't do we want to put it in process? Yes, I was. I was. Asking. Well, I put mine in process. Um, I'll go look at the at that one here. Let me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's actively working on it, like. Steve assigned it five days ago, so maybe Steve, you and Sergius can follow up and figure out what swim lane this should be in. So the error message says implement me. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Um, I filed this one, um, so we have in our cube control plugin, when you try to create a workspace, if you get a not found response, there's a comment in there that says there may be some cache slowness and so, uh, or something along those lines, and this is the error message that we return. We need to revisit the error message because this is not accurate anymore. Backlog we go. Thank you for the help wanted on there. Although I think we need some direction for what we say before uh, just having somebody work on it. Um, oh yeah, the, so I don't know if this is more prevalent, but when I was trying to debug uh, some deletion issues, the um, KCP API binding controller string is used as the user, user agent for three or four or five different controllers. And I think we probably want a, a unique user agent for each controller um, when it's making client requests. So um, I filed this for that one. Oh, this isn't good. What was this, Steve? Oh, this was, yeah, OK. Um, yeah, so this was fun where if you manually do a find and replace against a CRD that's in our repo and the corresponding generated API resource schema, but you don't change the prefix name for the schema and you don't go update the API export from any prefix name, you basically break KCP where you can't start up because it's trying to do an update on an existing schema instead of a create. So at the very least, we need verification that makes sure that if you are submitting a pull request and there's a diff in there where one of the generated schemas changes that the metadata name must also change as well. So that's what this one was about. Uh, let's see. At the very least, we should have I verify that if a generated API resource schema has diffs, data that we need is included. Okay. Uh, I don't think I need to look at the community meeting, so we'll change this filter. Deleting a deployment from workspace doesn't delete the pod. I know there was some a little bit of back and forth. Stefan, you had looked at this. 
Uh, I think it probably needs more investigation because we know this works. So there must be something specific here that's breaking it. Yeah, yeah I was asking whether the deployment is gone as well because he just mentioned mentions pot downstream. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what site is progress? <laughs> Uh, this one, I know, David, you had some back and forth on this. Did you try to reproduce it yourself, or were you just? Uh, not for now. I'm mainly asking for more information about this. Uh, the issue uh, author already sent some, and then I was asking for more, especially I'm was suspecting yeah things you know, in the API export or also schema. Some so I, I you know probably I have to look at the last answers. Uh, obviously, just now is the last message. Okay. So this is still under investigation. All right. Um, can you make sure somebody takes over yeah, from ICC. you when you Somewhere, are someone else? Out? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's it, because I'm going to come back to this one. So, any other topics, or shall we end early? All right, let's end early. Thanks, everybody, and see you next time. Thank you. See you. See you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.